Hi, I'm Simon Kidd and today we're at Wimbledon Fishery here in the Devon Somerset border. It's a beautiful lake, it's 374 acres and we're going to take a boat out today and we're going after the garden chafer beetle or the, the fish that are feeding on the garden chafer beetle I should say. A garden chafer beetle otherwise very popularly known as a cockabundi. A uh, very popular fly pattern uh, in various different forms and, and guises. We've got, I've got my own special patterns that I like to use on here. Um, the conditions are very favourable. We've got a light wind. It's, it's cold this morning. We had an awful lot of rain over the last couple of days and overnight as well, but it's, um, it's quite chilly at the moment. There is a light breeze. It's blowing southwesterly, so that's really encouraging. And we know it's going to pick up around lunchtime, so that's fine. It's not going to be a serious uh, blow this afternoon. But what that will do, and if the sun comes out as well, it's going to produce the activity of, these, uh, of the beetles that have been feeding on um, the, the trees and the shrubs and the grass and everything on the, on the banks of the lake here. And it's very popular at this time of year. I've got a choice of setup really. You could take a five weight, six weight, or a seven weight, and I think I'm going to go out with a six weight today. We know the fish here. I want to fish light because we're fishing on the top, um, but we know the fish here can be particularly good as well. So I want something with a bit of beef in the rod at the same time. It's quite interesting actually. Lots of people I've seen them. They'll pick up a rod, put it together, and the first thing they'll do is pick up the butt section and put the next section on top. I always start from the tip section because what you don't want to be doing is reaching up to find the tip section because the tip is the most vulnerable part of a rod and it's so easy to break. Same, same when you actually come to putting the line through the rod rings and everything else, the, the tip is so important so yeah we have to look after that. So I built my rod tip first and finish with the butt section last. It's quite nice as well because on here I've got the, the spots on here which actually help line up the rings before we start. This is a seven weight line, it's a floating line, it's a new spectre line which is ideal for, for the boat. It's fantastic to be able to um, to cast at short range, it's got a good taper on it so it'll, it'll give us a lovely presentation on fishing floating line. But also if we do see a fish at distance or close to wherever it may be, it's easy to extend the line as well and give a really nice presentation at the same time. What I am going to do however, as I say this is a seven, uh, I'm going to swap that and put a six weight on here, which is this one because I'm using a six weight outfit today. I've got a tapered leader on this one already, but I'm actually going to take this off because I want to fish a bit finer on the tip. Um, this line itself, this taper I've got in here, it's, it's, it's ideal, it's good for taper and presentation and everything else. And it's on a floating line, I've got a loop at the end of the, the fly line there, uh, which enables me to, to attach it easily. But what I want is a bit more stretch on here, because I know the fish on here are very good fish, a lot of them. They've got fantastic fins and everything. They fight like mad, and the, the take, I don't want them to smash me off. So um, I'm going to introduce a little bit more stretch in here. And to do that, I'm going to swap this for uh, a camo leader, taper leader, which is uh, something that's been treated to give it the camouflage coloration, and that will give it more stretch because it's been boiled in the process and it'll give me a lot more stretch. I'll show you in a moment. Just making this up, it's, uh, it's quite ironic actually. We've had so much rain in the last few days, and we know the weather forecast is good for today. We've got a shower coming through just now, but um, I'm not bothered because we know it's going to pick up this afternoon. So. The wind's just picked up a little bit too, but that's that's useful, so it's fine. Just threading out on the tip here, very, very important to watch the, the tip itself. Fold the leader like I've probably shown before. And then pull it out from the tip, always pull it out from there rather than down. Otherwise it goes out the tip, so it's just done. Just attaching the, the new bit of tapered leader at the top end here. Uh, I'm using what I call a JB knot. After a friend of mine, John Barnes, had showed it to me. It's a good knot, tightens down, doesn't doesn't move, and leaves me basically without any kinking as well. So it's a good knot, good strong knot as well. Trim that off. That's my bit of camo leader. It's this material here, which is it goes. It's a nine foot leader goes down to 4.1 pounds however I'm not using the end part of this it's actually clear on a normal leader you can use it on the river and that sort of thing but today and um, that's going to be too thin for me so it's it's colored at this at the taper as it starts to come down to the clear tip and then to that you can normally attach your um, yeah, tip length if you want to on here what I've done I've chopped it I've cut it so I've got the same diameter here, it's about 0.25 something like that so it's probably down to about 10 12 pounds at this point and I put on the end here a small loop. This is my the business end for me, to which I can now attach the leader that I need for today. 
Again, I've used the same knot on here to, to secure it uh, as I would on a fly. So it's a 310 JB knot, and um, I have absolute confidence in this knot. It's very, very strong. It's not going to let me down. And but on the end of here now, I can choose whatever leader I need to. So if I need to fish a bit lighter, I can change from here. But what I'm not going to do at any point today is look to change this one. But if we get some big fish, there's so much stretch in here, so much more stretch than I have with the, the traditional leader that was on here before. What I've got for my leader setup, I'm going to use. I could use five pound fluorocarbon, and I'm choosing fluorocarbon for a reason. Um, but uh, I'm going to start with six and a half because I have no idea what size the fish are going to be in here today. Um, the big advantage of this, however, fluorocarbon will sink on its own, so I haven't got to worry about degreasing too much. Not that that's a big problem on here, but um, it just takes out that element, if you like, of degreasing because the fluorocarbon will sink slightly. Um, at uh, six and a half pound fluorocarbon, this is copolymer. I've got my my tapered leader is actually copolymer, and it's not a great idea to attach copolymer to fluorocarbon. This little two millimeter uh, ring, which is also allowed in competition today. Um, but to that means that I can actually attach fluorocarbon or copolymer on the end as I need to do it this afternoon. So um, I'm going to put on here to start with. I'm going to put six and a half pound fluorocarbon and make up a leader with three flies on it and see how we get on. I've got here my box for the cockabundi season. It's dry fly primarily, but the fish don't always take the, the cockabundi when it's on the surface. They will, and I like to fish it static when, when that's happening, but if they're not taking them off the top, sometimes they can be taking them just underneath. And a lot of traditional cockabundi patterns are just peacock tail body with a light hen hackle. A bit of gold in the tail, uh, like this sort of thing here. Um, I think that's a traditional cockabundi pattern. And fish wet, so I'll put a couple of those on the dropper. Uh, and this is my box. Um, I've got some dries here at the top, I've got some weighted ones if I want to get fly down a little bit more as well. And then I've got some other dry fly patterns here, if they're on other things as well. So things like um, this time of year we can expect to see, um, it's a bit early for daddies and that sort of thing, but we'll have um, uh, dung beetles maybe, we'll have soldier palmer, soldier beetle, and they'll be on the water probably. Corn beetles is another one, and all sorts of things like that, that we can actually, the fish will come up and take terrestrials that have come onto the water. And uh, it can be an awful lot of fun, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. The breeze is just picking up now as they forecast it would, and um, I think it's certainly before very long we're going to get some sunshine as well. And when that happens, the banks will start to become alive, and uh, I think the fish will actually pick up as, as the day goes on. So I'm hoping so anyway. Just starting down this left hand bank, we're fishing quite close to the shore where the fish will be feeding off terrestrials coming off the bank and just fit, making short casts. Nothing, nothing long because all the longer the cast I make, unless I need to make a longer cast so the fish will be cooking out there now, or that's risen or moved or whatever, um, the shorter cast the better because all I'm going to do otherwise is just spook fish that are on the top of the water. Too many people want to cast as far as they can from the boat, and that's not really necessary when the fishing for dries. This is one of Wimbledon's rainbows. We've just literally started the drift here. And it's a lovely fish. Look at it fighting, it's fantastic. The power of these fish is incredible. They're so well thinned, it's amazing. Blonde. My droppers are about eight, 10 inches long. So I'm fishing a little bit under the, under the surface um, for fish that aren't moving. This one's come blind, completely blind. Um, there's a fly was popping out there. That's our first, first lovely Wimbledon rainbow of the day. Beautiful, just look at the tail on that as well. You've got a few silver veins coming on that too. Fin perfect all the way. Beautiful fish. And that took the, the top dropper, dry fly, uh, and, and came completely blind, which is lovely. Great start to the day.
We've only come a little way from, from where we started, from the jetty actually, we've come down this, uh, this westerly shore. The weather has warmed up a little bit, the rain has stopped, there was a, a little drizzle while we were setting, setting up and everything, but um, we've got now, it's nice and warm, and where we are it's slightly sheltered, and I've just seen a couple of fish rising, there's one just there, quickly, right there now. There's just a few fish down this margin here, so I've got the dries on, I've got two dries on, one on the top dropper, one on the point, and they're just nicely, where's a bit of shelter, there's quite a bit of breeze out there, but just in the edge of the shelter here, perfect. Well, we've come up to um, the, the wind's blowing quite strongly now from the from the southwest. So we've come up to this edge here. Where we're looking for a brownie if we can find one. The trees are quite close to the water here and overhanging. Further up the up to now, I'm here. Is, um, the trees are further back from the bank, and um, where they're overhanging here, the opportunist brownies might be lurking. I hope so. That's what we're looking for. just put a cast in by that tree, that obstacle, the uh, little feature that's there. It's only a small brownie, I think. Yes, yeah, it's a small brownie. And we'll just net it and put it back. But... Oh, it comes out, it's barbless. There it is, going back in. Lovely fish. Run away. That's a lovely, lovely fish in, in fine condition. It's still a bit overcast at the moment. We've come out here in the middle. We've just got to put a sinking line on actually. Um, we'll wait for a bit more activity on the banks and stuff like that. There's very, very few fish moving at all. Um, but this is the sort of fish we're looking for. Absolutely beautiful. Um, Wimble ball, rainbow trout, gorgeous fish. It's a double haul actually, it's a sinking line, we've got a couple of boobies on the end and uh, obviously the further we can get it out the better depth I can get down. Um, the fish have been holding up here in some recent hot weather and um, just for the moment uh, the fishing's been quite hot, there's a fish now, oh it's a good fish. <laughs> These fish fight like mad in here. It's um, just a little pink-eyed um, booby. It's uh, pulling like anything. It's a tequila booby with pink eyes on it. And it's been quite a popular pattern for me. Um, and in the conditions here, the, the water's actually moving a little bit anyway. You don't have to do much to flies to, um, to in fire take from the fish but this is very strong fish. I'm still not sure what size it is yet. What is nice is some blue sky up there and the conditions are definitely improving so we're going to go back on the dries in a minute. And what is nice is this place has got deep water which a number of places in the West Country don't have um, so much and it gets very warm down here so when it gets 
very hot in the summer months, this place can still fish like mad and uh, holds a lot of colder water. So the temperature is absolutely crucial to rainbows especially. Anything above 19 degrees and they start to get very stressed. This fish isn't as stressed at all, other than the fact that he's trying to get rid of me. Lovely. <laughs> I'm going to let this one go, fish and catch and release, we've got barbless on, and um, they are lovely fish. Oh, yeah. There you go, I haven't touched it at all. What I've just done is, um, i put on a little damsel nymph on the point. Um, the fish, the, we've seen a couple of fish in here in the shallow water, and uh, the bottom of the wind and everything, we've not been taking them on dries at all, we've had a bit of interest, but not taking them at all, and everyone's finding it quite hard. So I've just put out a little bit of weight, it's on the point, it's down about six inches to foot under the water and uh, it's made a difference and the fish took that straight away, so positive. <laughs> Well, we've been uh, we've been persevering today with the dry flies. Um, started off wet this morning, and then uh, started to brighten up, threatened to brighten up, and everything. But actually, it didn't. We went back and fished the main lake down the, the lower end, and uh, we did manage to catch fish in the end. But the fish were, were not on the top. No one was catching on dries at all today, unfortunately. Been a big change in the weather the last few days. I think that's probably what's done it. Um, but we did manage to catch with a nymph on the point, um, just getting the flies a little bit deeper, and. Uh, we decided in the end that we'd come back up here and try out this, uh, this Upton Arm and um, we're looking for some wild brownies at the moment so this could be fun. We've seen, uh, seen the odd fish rise actually so could be in for some action I think. Quite a bit here. Got him. That's Good fish. What I'm going to do is keep this fish off the top now because with brownies as well. If you don't keep them off the top, they bounce off as for a pastime, even though I'm only on a six weight. Let's get to the, to the boat. And strong fish. It has taken the point away. Several of them have been taken across the button, That one. I am indeed. It's a lovely brownie. Look at those spots and markings on that fish. Absolutely fin perfect. Gorgeous wild fish. Off you go. Oh, it's 
lovely rainbow. It's a nice rainbow. Look at this day, that's beautiful. One of Mark's favourite fish. Lovely fish from rain, uh, from Wimbledon. And uh, we've come up here where the where the, we've got tree growth and everything up through this Upton Arm and so on. And uh, we're right in close to the banks. We're literally casting a couple of feet off the bank and pulling fish out that are live waiting for, for terrestrials and everything to come off the trees. And uh, they're just they're just casual feeders, and they're taking fly like this um, on the cockabundy. They're also taking the nymph on the point and just just off the top. And uh, as it makes a little plop, they're taking the fly. They're coming. They've got their attention, and, and that's what we finish up with. Beautiful fish, lovely. Just let that sink a bit then. Got to keep them off the top. Keep the rod down on the water. You say fishing's about thinking angling really to, to be successful and what we've had today is we've had quite a dramatic change in weather for the last few days we've had torrential rain for two or three days on the trot now after a really good period of, of nice dry weather I mean you can see the banks are down we've, we've lost a lot of water from the lake here um, so today after the change in, in conditions the last couple of days I think the fish are a bit, a bit off uh, in the main lake we're up here this is still the main lake but we're up here now after the brownies and they seem to be less affected if I was if, if that's uh, an assumption to make um, they've still got the trees around them and everything else. Um, it's quite open out on the on the lake at the moment, quite windy and everything as well. But the fish, even the anglers, other anglers out on the water, no one's having success with dry flies today and, and a week ago. So uh, it was it was quite successful on dries, but there's just nothing coming to the top at all. Out here, again, the fish aren't coming to the dries very well. They are taking the cockabundi, they are taking the, the small black nymph on the point. Um, and I say when it makes a little plop, um, it can uh, be enough to attract them from their from their lives where they are. And, and brownie's been territorial. There's lots and lots of little features here where they're, where they're all laid up and holding. So um, we're just putting the fly in wherever we can. And uh, it's, it's really exciting actually, it's fantastic fishing. Really, really good. Uh, these fish that we've taken today, especially up here, and, and earlier too, a couple of them, um, have come when the flies have been moving. And with cockabundi fishing particularly, especially if they're very dry, uh, I don't like to move them at all, but when they're wet and everything, and the fish will take them confidently when they're wet as, as much as dry. We haven't even seen any cockabundi on the water at all today. We've seen a couple of bees and beetles, and uh, not beetles, bees and, and other terrestrials, but very, very few indeed, and no cockabundi whatsoever. So any fish that are feeding them on to, today are feeding where it's been wet, and with so much rain, they've put anything coming out sort of uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the shore and everything would have been probably... That's another one. Nice brownie. It's only small fish. Oop. Very athletic at the same time. And the conditions this afternoon have changed quite dramatically because um, in the last hour, even the last half hour, the, the weather's broken. There's some blue sky up here. It's still quite breezy and windy and so on, but it's, we've got a nice breeze in here because we've got some shelter as well. And the conditions are absolutely perfect now. They really are. It's lovely. This fish was literally right in those rocks. Up here, 
feature, look. It could be, um, it could be something in here. Look at that beauty, Simon. That is stunning. That fish has actually taken the dry. Um, not had many that have, to be fair. Most of them have been taking the point in here, but this one has taken the dry. Almost as, as soon as it hit the water. Down could be a rainbow there. Is it brown? Is it brown? Is it brown? Definitely brown. <laughs> this beautiful brownie, which is going back now. One of the reasons why you come to a water like this at Wimbledon, it's fantastic. Yes, it's pouring with rain. We've had a we've had a lovely day. We started with rain and we've got been rain again now, but it's been fantastic. And this is absolutely beautiful, beautiful fish. We've done it. Again. There you go. Fabulous. We've had a fantastic day. We came here with a prospect of dry fly fishing with Cocky Bundy. We know it's been fishing quite well recently. We've had some fantastic weather. Today we've had rain, we've had rain the last two or three days and although the weather was supposed to have been better today and we came here literally to fish dry flies with, with, on the top of the water which is quite spectacular um, but we've had a fantastic day. We've, um, we've come up the Upton Arm here this afternoon and found some brownies. We had a couple of rainbows up here as well and we had rainbows this morning but there wasn't a lot happening on the lake this morning uh, for anybody in that respect. Um, it's, it's quite quiet out there today but um, with Cockabundy fishing it's not always about the top of the water and that's what we found in here. The browns have been taking them, probably some of the stuff coming off the trees and, and things like that. Um, they'll take the, the fly wet or dry and uh, we put a nymph on here as well on the point to get down a little bit. There's a little ledge on the edge here and uh, we found fish have been lying underneath there as well. So the fly on the point has made a little plop. Um, the fish have taken that one and they've also come up and taken the dry at the same time. It's been absolutely fabulous. We've had a magic day and can't wait to come back. <laughs>